Hi everyone, this is Marcus Curtis from Marcus Curtis Music, and today we're going to install the X Live card into our X32. I'm using the producer version of the X32, so let's get started. I'm also going to update the firmware in this mixer. The current firmware is 4.02. The latest firmware is 4.04. .04. So let's also download the firmware and update it while we're swapping out the card. Okay, let's begin by opening up our box and seeing what's inside of this thing. Let's see, see a piece of tape right here, right there. Behringer sticker, cool. Okay, so this book, the thick one here, this book is the manual in English, Spanish, French, and I think it's Dutch and whatever other language that is. This is the same manual that's in this, only this is Chinese, Mandarin maybe, I don't know. This is the same manual in Japanese. So you only really need one, this is the English version. It's not a very big manual. So you could see, and it contains the install instructions and uh, routing information, uh, how to route separate tracks. Also, interesting to note, you can put a lithium battery in here and uh, that will uh, back up the card in case of a power out outage. If you're recording somebody and the power goes out, the lithium battery will protect what you've already recorded without deleting anything. Okay, if you want that. This is the area that shows you firmware update right here. Uh, says to uh, be sure and update your firmware. Okay, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna update the card firmware and we're gonna update the mixer firmware as well. So now let's go ahead and pull the card out of the box. Now, the thing about these cards, if you've ever worked on computers and you know about static electricity, static electricity gets in, in the air and you touch somebody and you get that shock. Well, if that happens on a card and, and you get a shock, you could fry one of the chips inside of here. So it's important to ground yourself by touching metal so that any kind of shock would, would leave you and go onto the metal before you handle the card. So make sure that you ground yourself as you're handling this. So it looks like we're gonna have to cut this open. So let's go get a pair of scissors and cut it open. Okay, we've cut the card open. Let's go ahead and pull it out and take a look at it real quick. And carefully pull it out. Make sure we're grounded. No electric shock. Pull this out. There we go. Mmm, -mm, that new computer smell. Look at that. Mmm. Okay, so our this is the same. Audio interface is on our mixing board already, but the, it's got an additional card slot, basically. So let's go ahead and install it. So the first thing I have to do to uh, install it is remove the old card, and I'm gonna take this screw out right here. So let's go ahead and get this thing pulled. And we're gonna use the same screws when we install the new card. There, we're gonna put that over here on the side. This one right here. Just gonna go ahead and unscrew that as well. All right. And now we just grab these two silver things and pull. And the card will slide right out. And there's our old card. There's two little rails here that you line the card up with on the inside and it just slides in. That's all you have to do. Push it to slide it in and just use your thumbs on these two posts. Push it in. You're good to go. Now the next thing is to install the screws and we're all done. Okay, we have our new X Live card installed and we have our old X USB card 
in the X Live box, and we're going to keep it in here and store it for safekeeping. I just go ahead and went ahead and put it back in the in the bag that the X Live card came in, and now let's go ahead and download the software we need from the internet. Okay, so let's go down to the uh, start button. I'm going to show you a little trick before we get started here. We're going to click on start, then we're going to scroll down till we get to Windows System. And uh, in Windows System, we're looking for the control panel. We're going to right click on that and we're going to go to more. And in there, we're going to go to pin to taskbar. And now our uh, control panel is here on the taskbar. This is great. I'm going to move this over a little bit just so you can see. So when I open up the uh, control panel now, I don't have to go through the start button every time and scroll all the way through. I can just go down and click on it and get right into the control panel. So all my hardware is here, all my uh, Roland hardware. And I also have like my uh, Korg keyboard is here and uh, we have also like the sound if we want to go ahead and change our audio interface uh, we can click on that and choose our default audio interface so I access this frequently when I record sometimes so we're gonna go to programs and features and click on that and we're looking for the uh, Behringer drivers and we're going to uninstall those so here we are, here are the Behringer drivers. Just click on uninstall, and we're just going to remove those. Okay, we're just about done. And just go ahead and click on next to finish up. Great, so we're all done here. So we're going to open up our browser now, and uh, in our search engine, we'll just type in Behringer. And it should come right to the top. Here it is right here. I'm click on that to go to their home page. I'm going to go to Downloads. So while we're in Downloads, let's go over to uh, Mixing Consoles. I'm going to go to Digital Mixers. And then let's see if we can find our live card right there. And we're going to first download firmware because we're going to update the firmware on the card. Okay. And while we're here, we're also going to get the drivers for the card, which is right here. Version 5.59, I believe. Go ahead and download those. Okay, and if you want to get the uh, manual as well, just go ahead and click on this little link here, and the manual will open up, and you can download the uh, Adobe version of the manual if you would like that. And uh, we'll just go ahead and save that real quick. And uh, just to close out this uh, little tab here, and we're back to our download screen. And now we need to get the uh, firmware update for the X32 producer. So we're going to highlight the X32 producer. And we're going to go down here and look for the firmware version 4.04.1. There it is. And we're going to save file, click OK, and right in the same download folder. So there it is, we're all done with the downloads. Looks like everything is finished downloading, so we're gonna go ahead and close the browser now. All right, so now let's go to our download folder. And the first thing, of course, we have to do is extract the files. i will just unzip all of these real quick, and we're gonna uncheck the show the extracted folder. And one more to do. Okay. All right. So now what we need to do is take these compressed folders and add them to the archive drive. So I'm going to hide, light all of them and right click and go cut. Then go to my elements drive, which is my backup drive. Go to the Behringer folder and just paste it in there. And uh, I have a backup uh, folder for all the drivers I download in case they ever need a certain driver version again. Okay. So now what we're going to do is back out of this. And then I have an extra uh, folder here that I already had in the archive drive. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and delete that. And then we'll go over to the Behringer driver folder, click on uh, the main folder, and just go ahead and install the XLive drivers while we're at it. And we'll just hit next, and you're going to figure out that this goes pretty quickly. And there we go. Okay, now when you hit next and go to finish, 
message comes up. And if you click on no, the box will go away because you have to click finish. And the same box comes up. Just click on yes. Make sure it's yes, no. You'll go around in the vicious circle. So we're all done. So now the next step is to take uh, the firmware and put it on a thumb drive. Here's our USB thumb drive. So we're going to go over to the folder that has the firmware in it in our download folder. And that would be for the X Live drive is right there. And we're going to go ahead and just highlight it, right click, go to cut. And then we'll go over to the USB drive, right click and paste. And that's it. We're all done. Okay, now it's time to do our firmware update. We want to begin by turning on the mixer. And now we're going to insert the USB drive. Once our USB drive is installed, we're going to go to setup. And here's where our firmware is. We're going to scroll down to where it says update firmware. Click on it. See our firmware right there. And let's see. Can highlight it right here. Uh, backup all console beta first. And we'll just go ahead and hit confirm. It's not saving the libraries. And now it's installing the firmware. Okay, don't ever switch your mixer off during a firmware update because that will damage your mixer. So that's why you have this little message here warning you not to switch off the mixer. Now in the rebooting phase. And that's it. We're all done. The new firmware is now installed in the mixer. Okay, so we can only have one firmware version on the USB drive when we upload our firmware to our live card. So what we got to do we're so going to go ahead and plug this in, hold down the view button, and then turn on the mixer. Okay, our firmware update has started. And this process may take a little bit. And the thing here is, again, be patient. You don't want to turn a mixer off in the middle of a firmware update. You could destroy the live card in doing so, and then it won't work anymore, and then you're out $200. I could speed this up, but I'm want to show you how long it actually takes to do a firmware update so that's why we're not speeding it up so you get a good sense of how long this is going to take and believe it or not we are almost done I win a lot of games of horseshoes with that almost. Okay, there we go. All finished. Update complete. Please switch off. So I'm going to switch off. 
pull the USB drive, and then turn on the mixer. Okay, now everything is up to date. Okay, let's go open up our device manager here. And we're going to go over here to audio inputs and outputs. And we should see our mixer. Let's go ahead and turn it on. There it is, our Behringer X Live card installed and ready to go. Okay, now I'm going to insert two Ultra SDHC UHS 1 micro SD cards. So we're going to take these out of the package fairly quickly and we're going to insert one into slot one and we're going to insert one into slot two and now we are all ready to record music using the Behringer X32. So there you have it, a fully installed XLive card. Now, if you're gonna buy an XLive card, you wanna be sure and do the firmware update. You might run into issues if you don't. You could have some problems, so make sure you have that uh, firmware updated. And while you're at it, update the firmware on the X32 mixer that you own. Uh, 4.04, I believe, is the new version. If you don't have that, go ahead and update. Usually with firmware updates, they add more features. I know a while back they added effects, this time they've, they've added some things with routing. So uh, go ahead and get the firmware update and add features to your mixer. Uh, another cool thing is that we're going to record a song with the XLive card in the next video. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this thing through its paces. Hope we're going to test it and see what it can do and what it can't do. We'll record multiple tracks at one time. We'll try overdubbing if we can overdub. I'm not really sure what this thing will do, but we're gonna find out. So you're gonna to wanna to subscribe if you wanna see that video. Also, we're gonna do another video on routing, but we're gonna get really detailed with this. Um, and this is gonna be routing as it relates to recording your music live and routing as it relates to recording your music with a DAW. And if you have an X32 producer, I'm gonna show you a few tricks and we're gonna get into some deeper things than I've shown you already. So you're gonna to wanna to subscribe if you wanna see that. Also, if you like this video and it's helped you out, uh, go ahead and hit the like button because that helps the YouTube algorithm and it helps me to do these videos. And when I see that people like the videos I do, I go ahead and make more of them. So if you like this video, please subscribe. That would help me out a lot. Um, we've got some more things coming up in future videos, some really cool surprises. So you're going to want to tune in for all of that. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.